The morning seeps into my shabby apartment like a bad hangover. Gray light slices through the cracks in the peeling wallpaper, casting jagged shadows that match the gnawing despair in my gut. The hunger bites, a relentless rat gnashing at my insides, a constant reminder of this world's scarcity and want. I drag myself out of an old threadbare mattress, its springs groaning in protest, and wrestle into a fraying overcoat. The seams of the coat are as worn as the vestiges of hope in this crumbling city. I gotta venture out. I'm on a mission today. My footsteps echo along dimly lit corridors, a maze of decrepitude, housing countless souls like mine, lost in the grinding machinery of the state. Faces, more like masks of resignation, pass me by without a nod or glance. We're all nameless, faceless cogs in this nightmare sprawl, prisoners of circumstance, and victims of a system that couldn't care less about our humanity. This city, soulless and cruel, where hopelessness saturates the air and the streets reek of smashed dreams, has no place for identity or individuality. Survival is the only way of life. And rebellion? A perilous luxury. In this dismal existence, I lead a life of shadows and secrets, my true name erased, replaced by a solitary moniker, Artist. I'm an outlaw, a chronicler of our collective suffering, and my weapons are a pen's stroke and a brush's sweep. My apartment, if it can even be called that, is a solitary cell within a colossal citadel-like building, one of a million, a brutalist monstrosity that stretches into the heavens. Concrete walls confine me, and a single, dusty window offers a narrow view of a world I can barely recognize. Inside, the lumpy mattress and a battered desk are my only companions, aside from stacks of stained sheets of craft paper and an unauthorized collection of empty beer bottles, relics of the past. On those sheets of coarse paper, I pour my soul. I create worlds, telling stories and drawing, and painting vivid images of the harsh reality that crushes us. My art isn't a mere form of expression, it's my lifeline, my currency for survival. In a world where even the most basic necessities are scarce, my creations hold a value beyond measure. My drawings, my stories, they're just plain dangerous, but folks can't help but crave them. It's like, they're trouble with a capital T, yet everybody wants a piece. People know they're risky as hell, but they're still damn tempting. You know what I'm saying? They're like the bad boys or the wild girls of the game, and you can't help but be drawn to them. Saying my art is just plain subversive? Man, that's selling it short. My stuff, it's like a one-two punch to the stomach, and calling it subversive is like calling a hurricane a light breeze. This urban black hole, a real piece of work. The boulevards whisper tales of desolation, pavement bears the scars of shattered hopes. I can taste the bitterness in the air, but just for today, I'll push that shit aside. Today I'll see her again. She's a mirage, her beauty is off the damn charts. A drop-dead gorgeous blonde, ripped right out of some pseudo-utopian parallel world. Trouble is, that utopia is teetering on the edge, ready to nosedive into the same dystopian abyss that's been nibbling at my life. Ours is a covert romance, unfazed by the boundaries between dimensions. In her world, they've pulled off some crazy stuff. It looks like a utopia on the surface, where they've kicked material needs to the curb, and they're practically immortal. But that utopia is a facade. Their society is frozen solid, no room for creativity or ambition. They exist for the sake of just existing, stuck on repeat. Every wish gets handed to them, every challenge wiped clean. Progress? Change? Nah, those words mean squat. But here's the kicker, they don't even know there's a shadowy force lurking in the wings, about to snatch their lazy ass utopia. They're too damn complacent, too lost in their slumber. Down below, there's an underground secret society, and the blonde angel is in on it. 
They're prepping for a showdown with that oncoming menace. And they're not playing nice. No way. These rebels are on a mission to wake up their fellow citizens, and they're doing it by employing sly propaganda, art, fiction, whatever it takes to light a fire. My creations, smuggled to them by my smoking hot golden angel, are like a slap to the face, meant to snap folks out of their endless nap. They're fighting to disrupt that stagnant status quo, praying that art can spark a revolution and keep their world from going straight to hell. As I trudge across this godforsaken city, all I care about is dodging those damned surveillance drones. Metal vultures, always watching, always ready to fry you into oblivion in the blink of an electronic eye. They say emotions are a threat to the state. Well, screw that. In this filthy urban wasteland, emotions are like a battered old whiskey bottle tucked in a paper bag. Everyone knows they're there, but nobody wants to admit it. My face, hidden behind layers of digital smoke and mirrors, is my way of flipping the finger at those watchful bastards. They hate it when you let your heart run wild, but it's all we've got left in this messed up world. In this numbing, unforgiving reality, surrendering your feelings is the price of admission. But I ain't giving up the right to feel, not in this crummy world. So, let him watch, let him try to burn me out. I'm keeping my heart, even if it's buried deep beneath these gritty streets. Wandering in the shadows of these urban canyons, my thoughts inevitably gravitate to the vision of my blonde goddess. In this frigid metropolis, where passions and affections are outlawed, my mental image of her stands as my singular refuge, a radiant source of warmth in a world grown cold and unfeeling. My yearning for the return of her smile, that luminous beacon of humanity amidst the twisted dystopia that surrounds me, fills my mind completely. Our meetings, secret of an intimate, have been a constant in our lives since the day we met. The very first time we crossed paths, it was a brief, wordless encounter. She stood there, a sweet flower of innocence amid the decay, her blonde hair gleaming like sunlight. We were just kids when she appeared in this world, seemingly out of thin air, inside the desolate ruins of what had once been a steel factory. Sneaking into that place had been a frequent pastime of mine, and it still is. You see, one day, I stumbled upon a treasure trove of packaging paper and writing materials tucked away in a storage area, miraculously preserved despite the bombings. Drawing has been my salvation ever since childhood. She graced me with her gentle smile, one that held a captivating charm, and then she extended a chocolate bar my way, a legendary delight I'd only ever heard whispered about until that very moment. In return, I presented her with a drawing, a stark portrayal of my grim reality, yet one that carried a glimmer of hope within its lines. From that day on, she kept returning, and as the years slipped by, our love story blossomed. As the seasons changed, our encounters grew more frequent. We'd cherish our moments in the hidden corners of the city, beneath the veil of night, our love and undisclosed dance in a world determined to quash any hint of rebellion. With each stolen moment, our connection deepened, forging an indestructible bond. But then, there were those damn times when she just had to bail, vanishing right back into her utopian realm. The laws of physics, those heartless sons of bitches, they ruled our sorry asses without any mercy. As she pranced through the rift between our worlds, I stood there, helpless as a beaten down mutt, while a big, gaping emptiness swallowed me up like the vanishing of a wild dream, leaving me with an infinite sadness that felt like a bottomless pit. The fire goes out, buddy, and you're left shivering your balls off again. You know the goddamn feeling, don't ya? See, the thing is, our love wasn't just forbidden, it was impossible in the truest sense. You see, when she crossed into my universe, she could hang around for a good while, before things took a turn for the worse. It's not that she didn't want to stay longer, believe me, she did. But it's like we were living by two sets of rules, hers and mine. 
The moment I'd step foot in her utopian universe, my atoms would initiate a quantum level dance, and within seconds, I'd vanish into thin air, dissipating into subatomic particles. Yet, her experience was different. Her body could withstand the distinct vibrational frequency of my world for approximately 12 hours before being compelled to return to her own dimension. And no crystal ball could tell us when she'd show up again. But our love, it was an enduring force, a motherfucking juggernaut, a flame that refused to snuff out. Those moments we shared, no matter how short-lived, they were like a stab in the heart to life's apathy. They were a damn good testament that even in the darkest alleys of existence, love and hope could still find a way to raise a defiant middle finger. Our conversations grew more profound, our chemistry becoming more intense with each tryst. We'd relish any time we could share, our love affair a sanctuary amid the challenges we faced. I recall the evenings when we perched ourselves on the rooftops of abandoned buildings, the city stretching out below us in all its decayed glory. We share our dreams, our fears, our hopes. I told her about the crushing reality of my world, where every day was a battle for survival. She spoke of the utopian society from which she hailed, a place where creativity was stifled by comfort and complacency. One night she confided in me about her clandestine organization in the utopian realm, the one that surreptitiously disseminates my art and writings under the guise of works of fiction, as cautionary tales to her people of the impending dystopia. My art, born out of desperation, had become a life buoy for her world, a means to awaken the dormant souls. I journey onward via concealed passages, aiming for a spot in the shadow zone just beyond the scanner's reach, a dirty rendezvous hole we call ours. It's located right at the edge of the walled sprawl, where her interdimensional crossover point lies. 24 hours ago, the divide between her universe and mine began to reopen, and my remote monitor erupted with a cacophony of beeps and tones. The anticipation, a goddamn wildfire racing within my veins. Tonight, she's coming back to me, and it's like a shot of whiskey to the soul, warming me up from the inside out. But I ain't no fool, this ain't no Hollywood romance. I know how this plays out. She'll show up, we'll share a few moments in the darkness, and then she'll vanish again before the first light of day. It's a cruel joke, but for now, I'll cling to the joy of seeing her, let it wash over me like a tidal wave, even if I know it'll leave me wrecked when the morning comes.